Instagram can be an excellent platform for recruiters if you are interested in advancing your career and your success as a recruiter. What you want to think about is how to use this platform to brand yourself as a recruiter worth following and paying attention to instead of using it to search for potential candidates. This change of mindset is required when you want to drive your own career and elevate your chances in succeeding in your recruitment projects. So what you need to do is stop being a silent matchmaker and start becoming a matchmaking magnet who attracts candidates towards you and the career opportunities you represent. In this week's episode of the Building a Modern Employer Brand podcast, we'll talk about Instagram for recruiters. I'll share some ideas, suggestions, and tips on how you can leverage Instagram as a recruiter. And I'll also pinpoint what you should do if you want to spend your time wisely on this platform. My name is Susanna Randanen, and I teach branding, marketing, and communications for HR industry professionals. And if there's some barking behind, it's my Stella. She's here with me. So let's start with the most important message of this episode. And this message is stop seeing yourself as a silent matchmaker and start becoming a matchmaking magnet who attracts candidates to you and towards the career opportunities you represent. And you do not need your employers or your clients' social media accounts for this. In fact, you'll be actually smarter building your own profiles and audiences as those can be worth as much as relevant work experience as you move forward in your career. The larger your audience is, the more attractive you become as a recruiter and not just for employers and clients, but obviously for job seekers too. When you have your own social presence as a recruiter, be it in-house or a consultant, you'll never have to worry about any company's lack of employer brand in your work. And the stronger your own recruiter brand is, the more appealing recruiting projects and career opportunities you'll also be offered. In 2023 and onwards, I think it's time to take your career into your hands and stop being a silent matchmaker, struggling with unattractive or simply just unknown employers trying to speak to talents who ignore your pleas. Are you in this with me or not? I hope you are. I think you are. Now, then I want to talk to you how you can leverage Instagram for this. So obviously, what you need to stop focusing on is how to share links to job ads. This does not mean that you should not be or you could not be promoting your job opportunities. Uh, Recruitment advertising is a different thing. So it doesn't have anything to do with uh, you leveraging Instagram as a recruiter. So this is different. So you can do that. But what I mean is that when you use Instagram organically, then do not use it uh, to share links to job ads. Uh, We all know by now sharing links on any social media kills your reach as the algorithms. They just don't want us to direct their users from the the platform outside that platform. What this means is that our strategy for you is not to learn to advertise job opportunities at all. But as said, I'm not saying that you shouldn't do it or couldn't do it, but as said, this is something different. So instead, what I want you to do is learn how to build a massive following of job seekers uh, and think yourself as their career advisor or mentor. And uh, when you stop milking your audience for applications and start using your knowledge, your insight, and your experiences on how to find an ideal job or how to advance their careers uh, or and how to get in contact with employers and recruiters, you'll soon find that you start attracting people who are either currently looking for new career opportunities or are in the process of activating on the job market. 
So the trick is that when you feed them with all these appetizers, your your knowledge, your insight, your experiences, your tip, your advice, they get hungrier and they start asking or finding out what is the main course. And of course, the main course are the job opportunities that you hire for. So that's how you leverage Instagram as a recruiter. That's how you leverage any social media as a recruiter. But this episode is about Instagram specifically. What should you post as a recruiter on Instagram? Now, I want to remind you, I've I've, uh, shared this information many, many times before. And if you are my student, you know, we've discussed about this. This is in, in, you know, in my educational material in more detail as well. But people use social media for four things. They want to become updated and informed about what's going on, what's happening, such as news, but not just official news, but sort of any kind of what's happening, you know, be it official or unofficial. They also want to become inspired by others. You know, what others do, how they live their life, how they do their work, you know, how, and, and how do they do it? So we are looking for sources of inspiration that we can sort of uh, uh, use uh, to our own benefit as well so that we can... Um, you know, learn things or do things in a similar manner. Influencers obviously use this uh, reason uh, in their work when they inspire their audiences to follow them, to try and test, uh, use, purchase the products and services that they represent for the for the brands. Now, people also use social media to learn. So short form educational content such as quick tips and, you know, fast advice is one of the most engaging content on any social platform these days. So this is something that you want to use to your advantage as a recruiter on Instagram. Also, the fourth thing, people use social media to become entertained know, get a little break and put their brains to rest. I know you do this, I do it. That's why we love all those cats and dog and baby videos and memes and all sorts of sort of entertaining, crazy stuff so much. It's easy to just kind of, you know, put your brains to rest and and, and uh, spend a moment, you know, becoming entertained. Now, you don't have to respond to all of these four needs, but you certainly should respond to at least one of them. Uh, but I want you to forget about promoting the jobs that you hire for and think about the, jo- uh, the job seekers that you want to connect with. How can you help them to find the jobs that they desire and you know get the career that they want? What Do you have this kind of, I'm sure that you have that kind of information experience insight. Do you have special skills and knowledge your audience could benefit from? Do you have special insight about, you know, salary ranges in the industry that you hire for? Can you help, for example, introverts present themselves better on paper and face-to-face? The more work experience you have, the more valuable information and insight you have that you can share with your audience Uh, in an informational, inspirational, and educational manner, at least. People are attracted to information that helps them to solve problems, overcome challenges, and succeed. I know this because that's how I built my own brand, servicing my audience the same way for, you know, already 13 years. This is what I give to you every week. And when you attract the people, the job seekers, uh, to you, your value as a recruiter rises in the eyes of those who pay for your salary. And you can directly apply that value of your growing network to what you expect to get paid for your services and your connections. I want you to remember that I want you to stop being the silent matchmaker and start becoming a matchmaking magnet. Now, before we call it a day for this episode, I have five uh, steps for you to get started, because if you do nothing, you'll stay the silent matchmaker. And you would really make me happy 
if you started to implement these steps already today and then continue, you know, taking these steps every day. And even if it was just 15 minutes at a time, because if you're not really doing stuff like this, you need to practice. You need to practice and practice, you know, makes perfect. So even if it was just 15 minutes every day, you need to take these steps. So very simple stuff, how to get started. Now, you have two options with your profile. If you have an existing profile and you already have a following, I would recommend you to sort of convert your in existing uh, profile into this, uh, you know, your professional profile. Uh, it's so much easier when you already have that pres- presence, you have an audience and um and uh, but but there is i have to say that you know i've i've worked with multiple uh, profiles for years and uh, recently i combined uh, the telemarketing bro on instagram with my personal profile and started to implement more professional stuff on my personal profile because as a brand as a personal brand i and this is what I've been talking uh, in in the previous episodes. I've uh, understood that your personal brand is even more attractive and trustworthy and appealing when it's not just about the work. When you you know spice it up with your personality, your personal stuff too. But that doesn't mean that you have to tell everything. I mean, I'm not sharing everything. I'm not sharing my whole life. I'm, you know, that's not my thing. But I understood that um, people prefer to follow other people than follow sort of commercial accounts. That might be something that you want to consider. You know, if you're willing to start from scratch, start with a fresh profile. If you want to keep your personal profile separate, that's completely fine. Obviously, you know, you start building from scratch, but we all do. We all do. So what you want to do is make your Instagram bio immediately obvious to your new audience uh, on what you offer. So, and here I'm talking about the content, not the uh, job opportunities. So what do you offer for your audience and to whom? So you want to be specific about who this audience is that you want to serve. So for example, I'm very uh, specific that I teach branding, marketing, and communications. That's what I offer. And then my audiences uh, or, or, or are HR industry professionals. So that's the whom. So immediately when somebody comes to my profile, they understand that all the tips and the information, the advice, you know, they are targeted to a specific audience in mind. And everyone is obviously welcome to to consume my content. But if they wonder about the angle or why do I talk about certain, uh, you know, specifics, then they understand that, oh, it's because these are meant for HR industry professionals. So then the next step I want you to take is select two to three keywords that reflect your offer. Uh, So for me, for example, I could just use branding, marketing and communications. But because obviously employer branding is my biggest thing, uh, at least so far, uh, something that I want to carry on doing. Uh, then obviously employer branding is one of my keywords, but not the no, well, not the regular employer branding. I have the modern employer branding because that's the method that I've developed. Select your two to three keywords that reflect your offer, the you know what your content is going to be about, and use those as your hashtags, hashtags, and uh, as your key content themes. Because you want your audience eventually to just learn to connect these keywords with you. And when people are using the keyword search, you know, they will find you as many times as you posted content under each of the hashtag. So that helps you to be discovered as well. Then the, the third uh, step is to make and, and, you know, keep up, make and maintain a simple content plan. And uh, I recommend the Trello board. There is no commercial connection uh, between myself and the Trello board. They're not sponsoring this episode or anything. I just 
I have been promoting it as a, as a user myself for, you know, years because it's perfect tool for this and it's also free. So uh, make a simple content plan and then continue updating it on the Trello board uh, so that you can organize your content ideas and copy text and images that you have used in your posts. You want to also store your copy text and images uh, in on a Trello board for you because uh, there will be a time where you want to recycle, you know, content that you've uh, already posted before. And it's just so much easier when it's in one place on the Trello board, for example, and you can go back to and find everything there just, you know, for, for simply to to recycle and reuse it again. Then this this one is a really important thing. Now, I want you to start searching for other HR-related coaches on Instagram and start following them. You want to spend a little bit of time regularly to learn how they use Instagram, what kind of content they create, and just simply just to learn from them, get inspiration from them. You want to check out their stories, their reels, their posts, their pictures. You want to kind of analyze uh, how much are they talking about themselves? How much are they talking about the topics that, that are uh, uh, sort of uh, uh, informed or, or, or communicated in their bio? How do they use the link? How do, how do they use the highlights? What kind of images are they using? And just to kind of get the idea of, uh, you know, how they're, how, you know, what kind of content they're, they're, uh, providing for their audiences. And then uh, it's very interesting if you go to the second tab on the bio, which is like the tab for uh, their reels content, you can actually see how many times the, each of those reels have been viewed. So you may want to check especially those reels that have a higher uh, number of views than their other reels because, you know, they've obviously been more popular. And then you want to kind of learn and analyze what was that reels about? Did they use music on it? Did they speak? Was it long? Was it short? You know, it's, I mean, I still do this a lot uh, uh, for my own sort of learning and understanding you know, what works and what doesn't and, and you know, be being inspired myself. So that's what you want to spend regularly little time on. Follow HR related coaches on Instagram. Uh, eventually, you want to start following other kinds of coaches on, uh, on Instagram too. Not, so not just HR related, because especially like the actual lifestyle influencers, I think I've spoken about this earlier in the podcast as well, especially lifestyle, lifestyle influencers are really good at uh, adopting like the new trends. They're like the early adopters. So I always learn new kind of hacks and, and tricks, even if I wasn't going to test them myself uh, immediately. But they kind of keep you sort of on board of what's coming, sort of the trends. And then obviously, I want you to start posting your content. So create content. And obviously, the recommendation is to opt for reels and stories because uh, they are better for your engagement. Engage with users who match with your audience to your best knowledge. Start following them and liking and commenting their posts. This is how you get more engagement. You want to show you know, you want, you know, you want to show your face and don't forget to share the same content on LinkedIn to see who likes it and who might want to follow you also on Instagram. <laughs> to get you started with uh, finding inspirational uh, HR uh, coaches for your, uh, for you to follow, I found five good ones that I think are, you know, pretty good. But because I can't share those links with you, obviously, on this audio, so you need to go to the show notes article at modernemployerbrand.com slash podcast 162 to get them. Easy peasy. But I'm going to name them for you so you know what's there. So uh, these people are all career coaches and they're using Instagram in ways that 
I think that you should do if you want to build your own recruiter brand on Instagram. So the first one is called Evelina and uh, she goes by career stylist Evelina on Instagram. And she specifies that her niche, niche is job seekers in their 20s and 30s. So she's very specific. She's catering to job seekers who are early on in their career. Very nice. And the second one is called Austin Belgak. I'm not sure if I pronounced his last name correctly. He goes by the profile cultivated.culture. And he teaches people how to land amazing jobs without applying online. I think that's, you know, that raises curiosity, doesn't it? It's a very good tagline. And he's working it smart because he has his own email list and a newsletter. And this is something that I've spoken before as well, that I don't want us ever to become dependent on any social media platform alone. And uh, very much advise you to also in time when you're ready to learn how to use email marketing, because that's really, really uh, effective marketing tool. Uh, then the third profile I found is called Sabrina, and she goes by the profile Work Lessons 101. And she offers 101 career strategy coaching and resume and interview preparation uh, coaching for her audience. Then there was the uh, uh, number four is goes by teacher career coach. She hasn't provided her first name, so I don't know what her first name is, but I love the way that she has defined her niche so specifically. She coaches teachers, but I do wish that she told us what her first name is to make it more personal because literally, you know, that's the sort of the game on social media to make it personal. And then the fifth one that I found for you is called Catherine Gonzalo. The handle is Catherine with K, Catherine underscore Gonzalo, J-A-N-S-A-L-L-O. She's a career coach for millennials and promises to teach ambitiously driven millennials how to advance in their careers, step into their full potential and maximize their earnings. Now, that's very you know, that's very interesting as well, isn't it? So you'll find the direct links to their profiles on uh, the show notes article for this podcast episode at modernemployerbrand.com slash podcast one, two, six. And I want you to take a look at look at each of these profiles, start following them, evaluate, analyze them, you know, go through their posts, their, their stories, their highlights, their links, uh, look at the bio because those taglines are definitely very good. Some of them are better than the others, but but you want to put this kind of a description of what you offer and to whom to your bio as a recruiter on Instagram as well. Alrighty. Happy with this? Because that's all for this week, my friends. I want you to come back next week for more branding, marketing, and communications juice to keep you going with employer branding, recruiting, and personal branding. And as said, my name is Susanna Rantanen, and I teach branding, marketing, and communications for the HR industry professionals who want to build a successful career and get the life you deserve. Before I say moi moi, which is bye bye in Finnish, those of you who subscribe to the weekly email, uh, I'm gonna share in, in this week's uh, uh, email more inspiring examples of career coaches, and I'm also gonna pinpoint what you should pay attention to in their profiles. So as the sort of key learnings. So if you're not subscribing to this weekly email, you've just missed this one. So you better subscribe to the weekly email so you can stop missing out on my exclusive tips for my tribe. Go to modernemployerbrand.com and you'll find the subscribe to the weekly email button there. Now I'm going to say moi moi. Moi.